Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of A Million Little Pieces by James Frey. So this is a non-fiction drug memoir, basically. It's been on my wish list for a while now. I think I first saw somebody talk about it on BookTube. I can't remember who, unfortunately. Uh, and then I added it to my wish list, and then uh, somebody got me this copy as a birthday present. So I picked it up, and I have been really enjoying it. So, uh, as I say, it's a drug non-fiction memoir. The other main thing to mention about it is that... The dialogue is just written out, uh, there's like no punctuation for it, like no speech marks or even like a hyphen at the start of the sentence or anything like that. But actually for me it was really easy to read still um, and like it wasn't off-putting or anything like that. It's actually got a blurb on the back from Irvin Welsh and I think that, uh, I, I, I think that Irvin Welsh is harder to read than this. <laughs> The, the other thing I will say though is that I don't actually have too much to say about it, at least too far, I'm currently 200 odd pages in. Yeah, it's just, it's interesting, but there's not been a huge amount that I've been like, oh, I want to discuss that, you know? But I'll uh, start with the blurb and then I'll look at some of my tabs. James wakes up on a plane with no front teeth, a broken nose and a hole in his cheek. He has no wallet and no memory of the past two weeks. When he checks into a rehabilitation centre shortly after landing, the doctors are surprised that he's even still alive. He's 23. After a decade of alcohol and drug abuse, James has pushed his body and mind to breaking point. This is the infamous, best-selling story of one man's fight to determine what future, if any, he has. A Million Little Pieces, told in phrase in inimitable, unflinching prose, is at once charming and appalling, searing and darkly funny. I will say a lot of it actually, after a little while it starts to get a little bit repetitive in terms of a lot of it's just him you know, missing drugs and wanting to kill himself basically. And I don't mean that to sound harsh or anything like that because obviously it's true and and I think um, that in many ways that's the point of it you know I just mean that from a purely like um, I guess an emotional and attached point of view as a reader it, it gets a little repetitive sometimes um, but you know I guess what also I did actually say to one of my friends because of that because he spends so much time um, just talking about how much he really needs drugs and how much he hates himself and wants to die you don't actually get that much of his personality. Uh, like, I, I don't know, it's kind of hard. I think when you're addicted to drugs, you you lose your personality, you know? The, the illness takes over, so it's a tough one, you know? But you don't really feel as though you're getting to know him. You just you, you feel as though you're getting to know how he feels, I suppose. That's, I guess that's how I'd put it. Uh, so he talks about uh, user dreams, which is basically when an alcoholic or a drug addict stops using, they often have a lot of dreams that they're using again. I used to have that when I tried to quit smoking. And then we get these pretty brutal dentistry scenes because his face is all messed up because he fell down a flight of stairs. And, yeah, I mean, I've had a lot of dental work myself. And so, like, at one point he's having, like, a root canal, for example, which is bad enough to read about. But also because he's, like, a recovering addict in a program, he's not allowed any opiates or painkillers. And so it just sounds brutal. I'm going to read you a, just a paragraph of it to give you a feel for it. The spray continues and Sander is turned on. And as it comes in toward my mouth, it gets louder and the noise is high and piercing. And it hurts my ears and I start squeezing the balls. And I try to prepare for the sander and the sander hits the fragment of my left outside tooth. The, sound, the sander bounces slightly and white electric pain hits my mouth. And the sander comes back and holds and pain spreads through my body from the top down. And every muscle in my body flexes and I squeeze the balls and my eyes start to tear. And the hair on the back of my neck stands straight and my tooth fucking hurts like the point of a bayonet is being driven through it. The point of a fucking bayonet. It does sound very painful, that. Alright, so here we have this little discussion here. Uh, John smiles. I tried to commit suicide once. That's too bad. It wasn't bad, it was funny. Suicide isn't funny, John. I was hanging myself while I masturbated, and after I came, I decided to just let myself hang. My mum walked in and screamed. That's awful. It wasn't awful, it was funny. It's not funny, John. And uh, then John tries to give him, uh, give James his daughter, and he says, You can't give me your fucking daughter. Uh, and John says, She'll do what I say. And he says, Then tell her to go to school, stay away from drugs, and stay the fuck away from you. And John says, That's good advice. You get this little conversation here. Do you know the success rate of this hospital? No. It's about 17%. That's of patients who are sober for a year after they leave here. That sucks. That's the best success rate of any treatment centre in the world. That really sucks. So we have this conversation here. Uh, Ted speaks. When I told my mum I smoked the rock, she asked if I could get her some. Everyone laughs. She did. She said I'd been hearing all about this crack stuff and I want to try me some. I got a 50 bag and I smoked with her till her eyes were in the back of her head. She didn't want no more after that. Okay, one or two last little fray bits here. Overall though, I honestly, I didn't have too much to say about it really. 
Uh, da, 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 da. We get a moment where he's about to have sex and he realises that he's never had sex while sober before. We have a moment as well where he says he's sitting on his hands and the reason is is because he doesn't trust them, which I can kind of relate to as well. And we have this little illustration here of the difference between um, uh, where a bunch of people smoke crack in a crack house. Uh, so crack houses usually have a supply on hand and they're usually run by someone and kept secure by them. This was just a deserted old building where people go smoke. So yeah, overall, I thought there was a lot to like about this. I think it was about 100 pages too long, to be honest. Um, and it does get a bit samey, but just because of the nature of the subject matter. I think certainly if you're interested in drug books, then you should check it out. I gave it like a 4 out of 5. I thought it was going to be a higher rating than that. And then, uh, as I say, it started to drag throughout the second half. And also, there's just not a lot to say about it. It's just, you know, an account of somebody going through rehab treatment I guess um, but I've read some of those before so I don't, I don't know that there's too much for me to say so there we have it that's what I made of a million little pieces by James Frey as always don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye